move on to another topic, like it or not, the Affordable Health Care Act, better known as Obamacare by some, is coming, and it is coming soon. Under the act, businesses with more than 50 workers must report their intent on providing insurance by the 1st of October. Ex existing plans would be grandfathered in, and employees would face penalties beginning in 2015. Uh, that should probably say employers. Randall Pickett, Pinkett is founder, chairman, and CEO of BCT Partners, a business consulting firm, and is here to talk about his perspective on the Health Care Act. Randall, it's good to see you. Good to be here. Uh, one of the big crit criticisms of the Affordable Care Act, what some have called Obamacare, is how complex it is. So yes. We want to break down a little bit of, of its implications when it comes to small business owners. Indeed. And you're right. It is a very complicated act. And some of the criticism is that it hasn't been clearly communicated to consumers and to business owners. What are the implications? So I've broken it down to a couple of simple steps. First question you've already referenced, which is, is your employer 50 employees or more? If it's more than 50, you must receive notification by October 1st as to whether or not they will provide insurance. If below 50, no problem, not required. But if above 50, not only are they required to inform you, but by 2015, they must be compliant with the provisions of the act. Second question, if they're going to provide insurance, you now need to know whether or not you will be opting to use the insurance from your employer or to opt for the insurance exchange. Now the exchange will provide small business owners with new options because if you think about it, you work for a corporation, typically you have lots of options, health plans you can choose from. Right. For a small employer, you usually have one, <laughs> the company plan. Mm -hmm. This will give you the option of saying, I'm going to opt for my company's plan or I can opt for the insurance exchange. Third question is, now that you know whether you're going to use the exchange or use your company's and, uh, provider whether or not is whether or not you can afford it and what are the implications in terms of cost and there's a number of questions you have to ask yourself here a are you eligible for a subsidy and here's where it gets very complicated there are rules governing the size of your family uh, how much you earn that will determine whether or not you qualify for a subsidy and if not you also have to ask will your employer be providing some 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 subsidy as well because some employers are running calculus now to say would it be cheaper for us to send our employees to the exchange perhaps even increase wages, perhaps even offer other in incentives, or for us to subsidize it ourselves or pay for it ourselves. And so you've got to ask those questions of whether or not you can afford what's being offered by your employer or whether the exchange is going to be more affordable for you. In a very fundamental way, then, these have implications uh, for the individual employee as well as financial implications for the employer that has more right. than 50 employees. So let's go back and talk about this exchange. Yes. Uh, I have read reports that the, the, the exchange could raise the premium. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, there's two competing theories here. One theory is that it's going to go up because part of the provision of the act is that no one can be denied coverage. Now, typically, what you pay for your premium is a function of not just your health status, but also those of your, your colleagues, because your premium is a function of the profile of your company. So the question now is, if we are looking at ways to uh, utilize the exchange, the exchange is going to be set up in a way that you can calculate how much you're going to owe as a function of uh, the competition. So whether it goes up or down is, is now down to the following question. It, it's going to go up if you have people who were previously denied, the elderly, mm. uh, people with pre-existing conditions, going to the exchange in larger numbers. That means costs will go up. The counter theory is that it's going to go down because now you've got increased competition. And so you've got companies vying for your business, which means that they're going to be offering you more competitive rates. That's going to play out over 2014 to know where we're going to fall, whether it goes up or goes down. We don't know yet. Okay, and again, another fundamental question about the exchange. The, it, it, explain exactly what the exchange is. These are private insurance companies, right? That's right. That have been contracted by the government to provide, let me not go so far, you tell us what the exchange is. Right, so it's called the Health Insurance Marketplace. And essentially, it will allow private insurance providers to offer plans through the exchange as an alternative to what have historically been employer-provided health plans. So it's essentially like a marketplace where you can say, like other online marketplaces, I'm looking for insurance, give me the best rate you can give me, and then private firms will compete to say, here's the best rate I can give you based on what we know of your health status. And let's talk a little bit, a little bit about companies. I read that uh, the, the rate of employer-covered insurance has gone down uh, over the last 10 years and that under the Affordable Care Act that some businesses have found that it is less expensive to just opt not to provide right. insurance and, and, and pay the penalty. How can that be? Right. So, so here's the, the numbers that companies are running. And UPS just announced that they're not going to be providing health insurance for spouses of employees, which is 
a sign of a growing trend of employers deciding whether or not to offer insurance. The numbers run like this. So if I'm already paying for insurance for my employees, if I look at the exchange, is the exchange going to be less expensive? Because what I could do is I could offer an increase in wages, I could assume the penalty for not paying the insurance, and still end up paying less than if I paid for the insurance myself. Now again, because your premium is calculated based on not just your health status, but those of your colleagues, Certain companies, it will make sense. For some, it won't make sense. That's going to also play out in 2014, leading up to the 2015 deadline. And, and also, are, are companies sort of manipulating whether or not they have to abide by these, uh, by these rules under the Affordable Care Act by the number of employees that they bring on? Is this sort of slowing down the job market? It's another theory that we have yet to see how it will play out. So some are arguing that once you hit 49 employees and you run the numbers on whether to provide that 50th employee uh, you know, to your ranks to therefore be required to provide insurance, does it make financial sense to do so? See, I would argue that most employers, once you get to the 40s and the 50s, are already providing some form of insurance. I think where it's really going to be a more critical conversation is for those employers who have large numbers of temporary employees or large numbers of low-wage employees, because that's where you typically find companies really trying to cut corners and trying to do end runs. But again, I think, generally speaking, I don't think that we're going to see a deterrent from the law as a function of people hiring more people. I think they're still going to see growth. Well, this conversation certainly needs to continue because there's just a lot of nuances there. But thank you for getting us started. Randy. All right. It continues. Good to see you. Good to see you.